Almost every ship you see will have its propeller at the stern, yet on a propeller-driven aircraft you'll usually find it at the front, so what's going on? Why do ships have the propeller at the stern? Back in 1839, the SS Archimedes became the first steamship to be driven by a propeller which was fitted deep down in the aft part of the keel. Whether that was luck or judgement, I'm not sure, but the point is that ever since then, propellers have remained in that same location. One of the probable early factors comes from an argument by Isambard Kingdom Brunel when he was persuading the Great Western Steamship Company to use a propeller rather than paddles on their new ship, the SS Great Britain. Paddles have inconsistent efficiency because they're constantly changing depth when the vessel is loaded with different amounts of cargo. It's similar of course in different sea states where occasionally you may find waves lifting the hull in such a way that the paddles lift clear of the water. A screw propeller at the stern on the other hand remains submerged no matter what depth the vessel is loaded to and no matter how much she's pitching. If that propeller was mounted near the bow, there would be the potential for it to lift clear of the water in heavy weather. Another one of Brunel's arguments was that by omitting large bulky paddle boxes, the SS Great Britain would be able to manoeuvre more easily in confined waters. This would only be possible, however, with the propeller mounted right in front of the rudder, because the rudder's efficiency depends on a flow of water to generate lift. By placing the propeller immediately in front of the rudder, you can create that water flow even if the ship is barely moving through the water. Then, as the ship's speed increases, the propeller always increases the rudder's efficiency because it will always be throwing water over the rudder quicker than the natural flow around the hull ever could. But why not mount both the rudder and propeller at the bow? Before we get to that, I just wanted to thank the little captain for supporting this video. I designed him myself as a small companion to reflect my passion for the sea. He's the perfect size to sit on my desk and keep me company throughout the many hours I spend creating each of these videos. Importantly though, he's equally at home on the chart table of a small boat or even the bridge of a ship. His friendly face is a subtle reflection of the enjoyment I get from the sea and makes him an ideal gift for anyone interested in the maritime world. Check out the link below to get your hands on one for yourself or a loved one, but act fast because when this batch is gone, I don't know when the next ones will be in stock. Anyway, we are about to explain why you can't mount the rudder and propeller at the bow of a ship. You see, a rudder works by deflecting the water flow, exerting a force on the stern of a vessel. For it to work at the bow, you would need to deflect the water flow at the bow, but that would create all sorts of eddies and inefficiencies for the hull's forward motion as well. The best position for the rudder is at the stern, so the best position for a propeller to increase the rudder's efficiency is also at the stern, right in front of the rudder. Of course, aside from just the water flow from the rudder's perspective, we should also consider it from the propeller's perspective too. A propeller works by pushing water backwards, exerting an equal and opposite force on the ship's hull, pushing it forwards. With the propeller at the stern, there's plenty of clean space to push the water into and if you design the hull well in front of the propeller, there's plenty of space to suck the water from to fill the low pressure void. If the propeller was mounted at the bow, sure, there would be a cleaner source of water to fill the low pressure void, but the water flow away from the propeller would interact with the hull itself. The hull would need to exert a force on the fast moving water to deflect it sideways, reducing the energy available to go into driving the ship forwards. Of course, you could get around the efficiency issues of both the propeller and the rudder by sticking them deep down under the hull, away from the turbulence of the hull itself, but then we hit another snag. They would be incredibly exposed and liable to damage in shallow water, as well as limiting in terms of the required depth of water for the vessel to get into ports. In fact, when we start to consider the potential for damage, we find another reason for mounting the propeller at the stern. If the ship collides with another vessel, or runs aground, or generally has any sort of accident, it's most likely to cause damage at the forward end. Keeping sensitive and expensive machinery at the stern gives them far more protection than if you tried to mount it at the bow. Of course, that protection actually extends far beyond the obvious reduced vulnerability to external damage. A propeller shaft is a hole through the ship's hull which needs to be sealed to maintain the watertight integrity of the hull. With seals facing aft, you'll tend to have a sort of suction effect created by the water flow around the hull, helping to keep water out. If you switch it around, suddenly you'll have the propeller and the motion of the vessel driving water towards the seals, increasing the likelihood of water penetration into the hull. Not only that, but with the propeller at the bow, it's going to be pulling the ship through the water, effectively continuously trying to pull the propeller shaft out of the ship. Mechanically, you would say the forces are in tension, kind of pulling things apart. 
By shifting the propeller to the stern, the forces all become compressive instead, meaning that the propeller is pushing the ship forwards. Different materials cope with compression and tension in different ways, with some being better in certain situations. Irrespective of the construction material, however, it does make sense that for a propeller and associated machinery, running in compression is easier than running in tension. As you can see, there are actually loads of reasons why it's advantageous for the propeller to be at the stern, and why there's been no reason for the design to change since those early trials on the first steamships. The few changes that have taken place have still maintained the advantages of keeping the propeller at the stern while attempting to increase performance in certain situations. For example, azipods. While they are still at the stern, they do differ from traditional propellers in the sense that the pods themselves are the other way around. The propeller is on the forward end of the pod and the driving machinery is behind. This seems to go against the logic that we've covered in terms of the pod running in tension rather than compression and the seals being more exposed, but with pods, they don't actually provide a direct route for water to enter the hull. The pod itself is often completely isolated, so water can't force itself into the main body of the ship. As for resistance, well, as the pod is attached to the ship, it doesn't need to generate positive buoyancy on its own. This means that you can keep it small and streamlined and ensure the water flow around the pod is efficient enough. Of course, pods still can't compete with a regular propeller in terms of overall efficiency. They only excel when the increased maneuverability outweighs the additional costs of reduced efficiency. This is why you'll find them on cruise ships that benefit from easier maneuvering during daily port calls, but you're less likely to find them on large container ships regularly engaged on long ocean passages. Nevertheless, whether your ship is powered by pods or a regular propeller, chances are it will be at the stern.